Welcome to section four of immunology. In this section, we'll be discussing the kinin system. This is the overview image for acute inflammation. When initially discussing acute inflammation in section two, we explained that bradykinin, which you can see right here, is what causes the sensation of pain, and prostaglandins, specifically prostaglandin E2, will cause increased nerve ending sensitivity to bradykinin. And bradykinin is one of the primary products of the kinin system. So let's dive more into the kinin system. When it comes to the kinin system, it's important to have this background. The liver will produce three relevant proteins, and these float freely in the blood. These include factor 12, precalocrine, and high molecular weight kininogen, or HMWK. This image depicts the kinin system. You can see endothelial cells here, indicating that this is a blood vessel. And we just mentioned that the liver produces three proteins, which just float around in the blood. These include factor 12, also known as hadjimin factor, so that's one. The second protein is precalocrine, that's two. And third is high molecular weight kininogen. So it's these three substances that will get acted on during acute inflammation and lead to a cascade of events which we describe as the kinin system. So here's how the kinin system starts. There's endothelial damage, and this exposes tissue collagen to factor 12. And again, another name for factor 12 is hadjimin factor. So why is this collagen exposure important? Well, collagen will actually activate factor 12. And then activated factor 12, which you'll see written as factor 12A, will perform two roles. The first role is that it will initiate the coagulation cascade. So it will cause local coagulation. The second role is that it will convert precalocrine to calocrine. And this is how it triggers the kinin system. And calocrine will then convert high molecular weight kininogen, HMWK, to bradykinin. So think of vascular damage which often occurs as a result of the initial insult in acute inflammation, and think of this vascular damage as causing that exposed collagen. This collagen being exposed to free-floating factor 12 will cause the activation of factor 12. So we get factor 12A. Factor 12A can then go on to activate the coagulation cascade. We won't discuss coagulation in this chapter, but at least you can see how factor 12 ties into that system or rather how the kinin system and the coagulation system intersect. So focusing again on the kinin cascade, we see that factor 12 can cause precalocrine, which you see right here, to become calocrine. Calocrine will then act on high molecular weight kininogen and convert it to bradykinin. So now that we know how to get bradykinin, there's a few things to remember about what bradykinin does. And this table lists bradykinin actions. It can cause arterial dilation. This leads to cardinal symptoms such as redness and warmth. Bradykinin also increases post-capillary permeability, and this causes the cardinal symptom swelling. It also causes pain fiber stimulation, so the cardinal symptom of pain. These three functions were discussed in section two when discussing the acute inflammation overview image. So going back to this image, we know that bradykinin is formed, and we can see bradykinin listed down here. And so just like histamine and prostaglandins, bradykinin will cause arterial vasodilation, leading to warmth and redness, and it'll also cause increased permeability of the post-capillary venules, causing swelling. And lastly, bradykinin can stimulate the nerves to increase the sensation of pain. We also listed those actions on this image. We can see bradykinin listed here, and these signs of inflammation right here, pain, redness, warmth, and swelling. Now let's talk about that last action of bradykinin, and that is causing smooth muscle constriction of bronchi. So if bradykinin is high enough, it can actually cause the patient to have a dry cough. In fact, it's sometimes referred to as a bradykinin cough. So going back to this image, we can see bradykinin also causes a dry cough. The next thing to discuss is how we get to degraded bradykinin. Bradykinin degradation is upregulated by something called C1 inhibitor, as well as angiotensin converting enzyme, abbreviated ACE. The name C1 inhibitor may be confusing. In fact, C1 inhibitor gets its name from its other role in the complement system, C1 referring to complement protein 1, which is really not related to the kinin system or the bradykinin system. However, with bradykinin degradation, it is important to know that complement protein 1 inhibitor actually can help degrade bradykinin, in addition to angiotensin converting enzyme. And here's how C1 inhibitor becomes clinically relevant. If there's a C1 inhibitor deficiency, a condition also known as hereditary angioedema, then the patient can have dangerously high levels of bradykinin. So let's dive into this condition, hereditary angioedema. So regarding pathophysiology, we already discussed that a complement protein 1 inhibitor deficiency will lead to increased levels of bradykinin. How does it present? Well, there will be swelling. 
In fact, this swelling can lead to dangerous angioedema. Again, when it's really high, can also cause a dry cough. And that's from the smooth muscle constriction of the bronchi. And let's think about this angioedema a little bit more. That's actually a really logical consequence of increased vascular permeability. After all, bradykinin increases vascular permeability, which leads to swelling. And in these patients, the swelling is significant enough that we call it angioedema. So here's what you need to know. Bradykinin can be broken down by C1 inhibitor and angiotensin converting enzyme. And if a patient has a C1 inhibitor deficiency, that's going to lead to increased bradykinin. So in a patient like that, what will happen if you give them an ACE inhibitor? Well, you'll have decreased function of angiotensin converting enzyme. So now the patient is left with no way to degrade bradykinin. So they'll have even higher levels of bradykinin. So they can get a dry cough. Again, that can be called a bradykinin cough. And it can also cause these signs of inflammation. And again, the one we're really concerned about is swelling. And since the bradykinin is traveling throughout the blood, it can reach the trachea and the airway. And that can cause the patient to suffocate. And it's this potential suffocation that makes hereditary angioedema a life-threatening condition. And here's a picture of a man during an episode of angioedema. You can notice that puffy lip. And again, this swelling can become lethal if the airway is involved and begins to swell. Now, when it comes to diagnosis, you will look for lower C4 levels. C4 is another complement protein that you will see again in the next section on the complement system. For now, just know that without adequate C1 inhibition, there will be more activation of C1. Downstream, this leads to more C4 protein getting activated to C4A. So there will be higher C4A, but lower C4. And the treatment is logical and aimed at the underlying issue. They don't have a C1 inhibitor, so give them C1 inhibitor concentrate. So now that we've discussed the kinin system, let's do a question to apply what you've learned. A patient steps on a thumbtack which causes her to bleed. As a result of this, bradykinin is produced and the coagulation cascade is initiated. What is the immediate precursor to bradykinin? How does the kinin system relate to the coagulation cascade? So let's focus on this first question. What's the immediate precursor to bradykinin? Well, recall that high molecular weight kininogen, HMWK, gets converted to bradykinin. So that answers the first part of the question. High molecular weight kininogen is the immediate precursor. Now let's answer the second part of the question. How does the kinin system relate to the coagulation cascade? Well, taking this patient as an example, she stepped on a thumbtack, which damaged the endothelial wall, exposing interstitial collagen to the bloodstream. And this led to the formation of activated factor 12, or factor 12A. Factor 12A goes on to start the coagulation cascade, and it goes on to eventually upregulate this process, the creation of bradykinin. So the patient steps on a thumbtack, and some vasculature is damaged, exposing collagen, which activates factor 12A, which stimulates the coagulation cascade. Factor 12A then upregulates precalicrin to calicrin conversion, which then acts to upregulate high molecular weight kininogen to bradykinin. So in answer to the question, it's through factor 12 that the kinin system will intersect with coagulation. And that concludes this section.